Hello. My story starts, as with so many stories, with a meal. Um, I was preparing breakfast for some friends, and uh, I decided to make a puffy, cheesy souffle. You know, a souffle is a mixture of egg whites and eggs and cheese, and as it bakes, it becomes puffier and puffier and lighter and lighter. In many respects, like a good cappuccino or the head of a pint of Guinness. Uh, my souffle was coming along very well and the guests were arriving and uh, one of my guests was a well-known psychiatrist named, uh, named Larry Lewis. When Larry came in, he slammed the door. And uh, those of you who are bakers know what happens when you slam the door. My souffle fell. Uh, and I was looking at this souffle and saying, what am I going to do? But a very tiny little voice in a foreign accent said to me, Jim, a fallen souffle makes a wonderful omelet. <laughs> and I said, you know, that's right. And I took that fallen souffle and I melted some cheese. I cut up some bacon. I flipped it over. I cut it into pie-shaped pieces. I served it to my guests. And they said in one voice, this is the greatest omelet we've ever had. So I got a message, a little message. Now, other people have gotten messages. Uh, St. Paul, for instance, uh, who was called Saul at the time, was uh, on a horseback going to persecute some Christians and God struck him with lightning and he fell to the ground and God said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he became a Christian. Uh, Constantinople, Istanbul. Emperor Constantine was about to uh, go into battle and in the morning he saw the Christian cross in the sky. And the Christian cross said, in my name you will triumph. And Constantine converted all his troops that day to being Christians and they won the match. Uh, the message that I got was a little less dramatic. It was just a tiny voice saying, Jim, a fallen souffle makes a wonderful omelet. Well, hello, I'm Jim Vincent. Uh, it's nice to see you. Um, I'm a teacher. I'm a traveler. I'm a talker. If my brother were listening to this, he would say, but not a very good listener. But uh, as of yet, this hasn't hit YouTube, so I don't have to worry about my brother, <laughs> you know. But I'm here to talk about messages. I'm here to talk about communication. And I'm here to talk about not just these things, but what the stars are telling us, the rivers are telling us, what the birds tell us, and what my cat tells me when I go home tonight. Um, you know, in America, if you talk about talking to the spirits, uh, people think you're weird. <laughs> well, I, well, I guess I can't disprove that. Uh, but, you know, I was thinking, uh, this is my new phone. Uh, it's really good. Um, if I turn it on now, uh, I can go to Skype and I can talk to my brother in Ohio. I can see his face. He can show me what the kitchen looks like. But has it ever occurred to you that there are other messages in the air? There are other messages in the air that we don't have the receivers to receive? Why is it that I can get messages from this, but I can't get mis messages with my hand or my brain? Well, the truth of the matter is there are plenty of people getting messages getting messages just like their phone. And, by the way, if you communicate with nature, there's no, you don't have to buy a mega packet. You don't even have to buy a phone. It's free. It's free because we're part of that natural world.
you, your result of a little speck of sperm and a very happy, eager egg. And they met and they held hands. And you were conceived. Conception's not just about words, it's about thinking. You were conceived. And for nine months, through a miracle of an umbilical cord, you developed your seven, eight, nine pounds. But once you were born and came out into the world, you didn't grow from your mother's food. You grew from things that exist on earth, from carrots and peas, from potatoes. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. It's blood, it's skin, it's nerves. Your brain can make it do things. But it wasn't made in a factory. It was made by food. It was made by what the earth produces. We in the Catholic religion say at Lent, remember man, thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. My friends in Tibet, when a man dies, they have what's called a sky funeral. And the corpse is left out on the top of the mountain to feed birds, particularly vultures. You see, we're made, we're made from the earth. We're made from the earth. Now, the earth uh, talks to itself. The earth talks to itself. If we're made from the earth, it means that we have some of that. Now, what you got from your sperm and your egg is genetics. Genetics is the syntax of life. Your parents gave you the syntax but the world provides you your lexicon. And that syntax is why when you were born, you look like your parents and not like a papaya or a watermelon or a chipmunk, thank God. Yeah, it, that little bit of knowledge is what made you who you are. So when you look at yourself, remember that was once, that was once material uh, from the earth. Now, human beings have discovered air conditioning. So with air conditioners, we can make winter out of summer. And with heating, we can make summer out of winter. But you see, the problem is, in your Doc Martin boots with their thick soles, you can no longer feel the mud between your toes. You cannot feel the pulse of the earth. The world is too much with us, late and, spoon, late and soon. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away. Now, who has discovered this? It's not religious people. It's people like Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. A scientist friend of mine named Lauren Isley said, you're not human until you see your reflection in the eye of an animal. Until we know, until we know that we're part of that, of that world. Let me talk about a special kind of nature that is trying to talk to us. And I'm talking about trees. You know, I had the good fortune when I was young to go to the very tip of Vancouver Island in, uh, in Canada. There were trees growing and there were trees rotting and as I looked into the mist, I could see the fog. I could see, I could see that tree becoming dirt and I could see new trees being born. The man's name is Peter Wohlleben. Peter Wohlleben, uh, he's a German. Uh, he's a forester and he wrote a book called uh, The Secret Life of Trees. Now it's funny to me. Uh, I have friends and we talk about these things. And over Christmas time I read the book. And I asked a couple of my friends, have you read the book? 
And they all said yes. Because even though we don't communicate together, we were sharing thoughts. We were sharing thoughts. You know, you can't share thoughts. Be you know, I travel to Ireland a lot. And uh, one day, I was, it was evening, and I was sitting by the beach. And a sail, seal was out there, so I naturally wanted to enter into a conversation. So I said to the seal, uh, where have you been? And the seal came closer to me. And I said, yeah, you know, Galway's a nice city, but the traffic's bad. And a seal said, yeah, yeah. But I, I try to stay in the water. And uh, I talked to that seal, and the next day, uh, I was uh, having a cup of coffee, and a guy said to me, uh, you're the American who talks to the seal. And I said, yeah. He said, what did he say? He said, there was bad traffic in Galway. I said, what were you doing today? And this guy said, well, I was walking out in the field, and I saw a big white rabbit. I said, uh, that's interesting. He says, it wasn't a rabbit. It was my brother. And uh, so we uh, naturally uh, formed a bond. Trees their roots interact. When trees feel that they're being attacked by insects, they can, through their roots, send up an odor that scares away the bugs. There are mother trees and father trees. If a baby tree is short of water, the other, the other roots can send water to that tree. The Amazon River is one of the longest rivers in the world, but the the water that comes out of the leaves of those trees is more water than in the river itself. You see, trees are communicating. They're communicating with us. One of the problems is that a tree has a very short heartbeat, you know, and it, it, you, have to wait, you have to wait for a while. Um, Jason, the Argonaut, you might have heard of him, uh, he built a ship out of some sacred trees and he got in the fog and the ship found its way home because it knew where it had come from. It found its way home. Much the same way that this drunken Irish guy I know uh, fell asleep in his horse and cart and the horse took him home. We came from that world. We were built from the world. To that world we will return. Just like Jason and the Argonauts, just like my drunken Irish friend. So a thought for you, you know, I'm African. My parents left about 300,000 years ago, and uh, it was a long trip. Uh, you know, but I heard, uh, I heard an African say, you know, uh, uh, when God, he give you pepper, make pepper soup. And you know, I took my fallen souffle and I made an omelet. You can take what you hear and you can make your own beautiful omelet. But you have to open your ears. You have to open your ears to the messages that you're receiving. So my, my plea with you is listen to what is out there. And remember, you didn't come into the world without something. There are things within you you have yet to discover. Good teachers don't impart knowledge. They help you realize what you already knew, but forgot to give a name. So it's a great pleasure for me to be here tonight. Uh, I look forward to hearing uh, my friends I want to thank uh, Isaac and Brian and everybody who's worked with this. It's been a fabulous experience. So thank you very much.